stars are playing next But right outside that same city The celebratory atmosphere would change quickly Who watching the game with me? You know Lil Trayvon was repping his hometown D-Wade and LeBron He had just came up from Miami to see a daddy Who knew such a great weekend with him Badly in a place where you move because it's safe for your family But some people got an ingrown hate for your family Half time, just a short break from the slam About to go to the store, Lil Cuz You want some candy? Bed, I'll grab you some Skittles, kid I'll be right back in a little bit I said I'll grab you some Skittles, kid I'll probably be right back in a little bit wow. Paid for little cousin Skittles and an iced tea Walked out the store and felt the chill of the night breeze It seemed a little colder than before He didn't know it was a boy Like a soldier in a war that was watching him Clocking him, thinking about stopping him Nine milli cocking him Who's this nigga walking through my neighborhood? He fits all the specifics of criminal statistics He looks suspicious 911 was your emergency A black man's walking through my hood purposely Stay calm, it's just Lil Trayvon But he wanna be the hero So we put his cape on George Zimmerman, neighborhood block captain Loaded clock trapped in Fake cop has Got out the car, ignoring what the cops asked him They always get away this time, that will not happen George Zimmerman didn't take his Ritalin Drunk off adrenaline, says he's making the citizens arrest Trayvon looks at him vexed I just walked to the store, nothing more, nothing less Just steps from his home, he ignores his request George grabs him, Trayvon swings and connects Starts screaming out for help, but Zimmerman sees a threat So he pulls out his gun, and he points it at his chest He fires, but he misses Trayvon pleads for forgiveness I didn't do nothing, this is senseless But George Zimmerman was so vicious He made sure the second shot hit him No survivor, no witness Trayvon never gave his cousins the Skittles Mr. All-Star Game Didn't see another dribble And George Zimmerman wasn't even arrested The message is only white life is protected in America Welcome Game Changers uh, I'm Jasiri X uh, We're once again back in Pittsburgh And we're actually here uh, doing a special interview uh, In regards to the Trayvon Martin case And we wanted to get some legal advice for you know, a man that you know is really well known in Pittsburgh for higher, uh, for for uh, litigating a lot of high profile cases, especially involving race and really helping marginalized communities of Pittsburgh. And we really appreciate him taking his time out. So this is Vic Volchek. He is the legal director of the ACLU in Pennsylvania, and he's going to answer a couple questions about the legal ramifications around the Trayvon Mark case. Thanks, Vic, for yeah taking some time. Thanks for coming over. Oh, man. Uh, it's an honor. It's an honor, really. Um, you know, your track record speaks for itself. And the work you've done with our community is thank you for that. Um, first question is, you know, when, when you look at how the police investigation was handled, you know, just, just legally, I mean, um, you know, obviously it was a lot of inconsistencies that even caused the chief of police uh, to step down. How would you, you know, advise a client um, in pursuing that you know, when, when you had such severe police misconduct early on in that case. Yeah, and, it's, and, and what happened there is not unusual. Uh, That's scary. You, right, I mean, you, you know, think back to, for Pittsburghers, to Johnny Gamage, or think back to Jordan Miles. Within 24 to 48 hours, you got the police coming in and saying, oh, we investigated and we didn't do anything wrong. It's like, you know, the, the day the police will say within 24 to 48 hours, uh, we don't know, something, something smells bad and we got to investigate further. I'm, I'm going to fall out of my chair because that just, that just doesn't happen. The reflex just seems to be we're going to circle the wagons. Nobody did anything wrong. Nobody needs to investigate any further. So none of that is a shock. I mean, what happened in, in Trayvon's case with that investigation is pretty much um, the norm. Now, how do you think, I mean, you know, clearly one of the, the issues in this has been race. Um, did you see from your, you know, you looking at it, a racial bias? And how do you think that played out? Oh, you think race was involved here? <laughs> you know, I was just I was saying to Tony Norman, who's a columnist at Post Gazette, we were, we were talking on, on Saturday night about this. Um, think about all of the high profile incidents that we've had either in Pittsburgh or anywhere else in this country. When's the last time it involved a white person? True. And it, and it just it doesn't happen. And I'm trying to figure out if there is a kind of intellectual answer to that question and I don't know that there is. I mean, the, the bottom line is there is a lot of institutionalized 
um, you know, I don't want to say it's racism, but I think it's stereotyping uh, of young black males in particular as being dangerous and, uh, you know, I don't know that Zimmerman's a racist, but he's playing to those stereotypes. Right. Uh, but the, the, the tragedy is, just like you saw in the, in the I think it's the Rob Rogers cartoon in the Post-Gazette Absolutely. this morning, yes, yes. Right, looking at that whole hillside of, of young black males that have tragically been killed by law enforcement. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and how many of those situations afterwards when they do in the investigation, uh, the, the, the most dangerous weapon you find is an empty Mountain Dew bottle. True, true. No, that's an excellent point. Excellent point. Now, you know... And you, and you mentioned it. I mean, uh, in many cases, young black men are stereotyped, they're profiled, um, and, and, and even demonized. I mean, now we even see, um, you know, really uh, them going into Trayvon's past and trying to, you know, make them out. Um, you know, you've seen this a lot. Um, why do you think the media, you know, oftentimes will try to turn on, you know, a young black? But do you think the media is, 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 will turn on Trayvon and his family? And um, how do you see this playing out? Well, I think first you have a, a, a real assassination, and then you have the character assassination. So, um, you know, whether, whether Trayvon experimented with marijuana, uh, whether he got suspended at school is, is completely irrelevant because neither of those is a capital offense, and he, he did not deserve to die for that. Um, you know, exactly why that happens, I don't know. You could be cynical and, and say that it, that it is actually a product of racism, but the, the thing that's really mind-boggling to me is that, sure, as night follows day, you, in every single one of these situations, you, you see this, right? First, you have the police denying that they did anything wrong. We, we did a full-scale investigation in the last six minutes, and we're positive that nothing inappropriate was done by the police. And the next thing you're going to say, oh, and by the way, did you know that so-and-so, right, and very often the information that's released about the individual, about the young black man, is actually somehow privileged or confidential information. So they're leaking stuff, you know, whether it's school records or it's juvenile records. True, I mean, that true. stuff's not supposed to get out. Where is it coming from? Right. Uh, and again, it just, it, it just shows... Um, how difficult it is in today's society to grow up as a young black male. Y you've got people who are out there, oh, no, 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 we have a colorblind society. Please right. tell me, how many white parents are out there when their kids get their driver's permits talking to their kids about how you should behave when you are in a interaction with a police officer? True, right? very true. None. True. And, and, and I don't know an African-American parent who hasn't had a, a conversation about, boy, be ultimately deferential, don't, do, don't make any sudden movements, whatever they do, just go along to get along because it's a matter of life and death. Well, I thank you for taking your time. Uh, yeah, Mr. No, Bolchek, I appreciate welcome. it. Yeah. Um, you know, one, of, uh, one of Pennsylvania's great legal minds and really fighters for uh, truth and justice for our community, Big Bolchek, legal director of Pennsylvania ACLU. Jasiri X and Game Changers. Peace.